Okay, class, this is going to be the example of the final rule that I wanted to show you. And this is this one is the least number of followers. So we're going to um, apply it just like we did the most number of followers, except our rule will be to enter the task that has the least number instead of the most number of followers. So our, we'll start off with our theoretical five being our minimum number and A has to go in because no other work can begin until A is done. So let's mark A is done and then our candidates are B and C. So now we're gonna count how many followers that each one of those candidates has. So B has one, two, three. So B has three and no matter what route I go, B goes, B could go this way, one, two, three, but that's still three. So then we have C, one, two, three, or one, two, three. So C is three, so we are tied. I'm gonna just randomly choose to enter B. And so B is 30. So B is in, and let's see what that does. So I'm gonna mark B as entered, and that opens up two more candidates for us, D and E. So let's look at our rule. So let's count. So D has one, two followers and E has one, two followers and C has three. So using least number of followers, we have D and E, D and E. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter in um, D. Well, oops, let me use the other color. So D, except that that's 40, exceeds our 60, can't do it. So the other one that had two followers was E. So let's put E in. So that's six, so that works. So let's get rid of or tag E as, as it's entered. So we don't have to worry about that one anymore. So now let's take a look. So rule um, or candidates now are D and C. So D has two, C has three, choosing the least, then that means choose D. But D can't fit into station two. And then we could resort to the next one, which would be C, and C is too big as well. So we move to the next station and go with the, the top um, least number of followers, and that is D. So D goes in at 40. So let's mark that as entered. And that opens up another candidate of H, of H. So let's, one second. Okay, so now let's take a look. Let's take a look. So candidates, I marked H as a candidate, but that is, that's not correct, is it? Because F, F is not, is not, um, done yet, so H cannot start. That would be breaking precedence. So, so my mistake to take H as, as a candidate. The only candidate now is C. And C can't go into station three because that would be 90 exceeding 60. So C has to move over to station four and that is 50. That's 50. Okay, so C's in, so let's tag that now as entered and opens up candidates of F and G. So that's it, H still cannot go in because we need to have F done first. So let's take a look. So candidates, F has one, two followers and G has one, two followers. It's a tie again, it's a tie again. So I'm just gonna randomly choose F to enter. So F can't go into station four, it would exceed the um, 60, can I put G in? Same thing, exceed 60. So I have to move over to station five. So F is gonna be entered in and F is 40, F is 40. So let's mark that one as entered, F is entered. So now I have another candidate. Now H is, is a candidate. So let's count least number of followers. H to J, that's just one. And G is still two. So, so our least number of followers rule says put H in. And does H fit in? 
H can go in because it's 20 and that puts us at 60. So we're max, so we know we're moving to another station. So now we're gonna, well, now, now at this stage, we, we only have the only one that can go in is G. And then the only one that can go in is I and J. So at this point, it's just a matter of filling them in. So G will go in, in there. G, oops, I'm sorry, my pen. That's supposed to be a G. G, and that is 15. So G's in, and then we've got I at 18, and cannot put in J, that would exceed our 60. So we need um, station seven, and that will be 60, 30, I'm sorry, 30, oh, sorry. J, I've started these videos over way too many times. So, so I'm just gonna have to accept that they can, they're a little choppy. So now we go, we've got seven stations. So it's gonna, it's, this is the same, I believe, as we saw in the shortest processing time. So our efficiency, and it's the actual efficiency, not the theoretical efficiency, that's going to be the total task time, total, oh, sorry, class, I'm tired, and I keep having, messing up these videos, so sorry about that, total task time, and over actual number of stations, stations times tack time. So that is 289 divided by seven times 60. And I believe that was in the 60 range, wasn't it? 289, seven divide 60, divide 68.8% for our efficiency. So, so we beat that balance delay is gonna be one minus that, one minus point. Six eight eight one is what it actually was, so that's going to be zero point three one one nine or thirty one point two percent basically. So bottom line, shortest processing time and most number of followers gave us the better. They gave us eighty something like eighty percent efficiency and longest processing time. I'm sorry, that was the wrong. I'm saying that backwards. It was longest processing time and the, no, no, I'm still saying it backwards. I think it was these, least number of followers gave us the 68%. And then the longest processing time and the most number of followers gave us the, um, the 80 the 80% 80 efficiency. So we'll want to go with one of these and maybe we can still improve on that. But those are good starting points for us then. Thank you for watching all of these, these videos. I hope that they helped. I mean, this is, this is a very standard method for, for balancing work within your station. So I hope that it helped and thank you very much.